the regular board meeting of October 22nd, 2019. The Pledge of Allegiance tonight will be led by the Anchor Bay Junior ROTC. Please rise. to the Anchor Bay Junior ROTC. Clerk Barry, please call the roll. Supervisor Ecovetti. Here. Treasurer Lafada. Here. Trustee Anderson. Here. Trustee Joseph. Here. Trustee Vosberg. Here. Trustee Domingue. Here. Clerk Barry is here. Item four, presentations. We do have an item tonight, 4A, a presentation by Macomb County Clerk Fred Miller. Welcome to Chesterfield, Clerk Miller. Thank you, Mr. Supervisor, trustees. Uh, it's great to be here in Chesterfield. Thank you for the opportunity. I want to assure you that I subscribe to the five B's of public speaking. Be brief, brother, be brief. And so I pledge to do that because I know you have a lot of important stuff on your agenda. Um, I, I really, the only thing I want to say is that there's good news going on in the Macomb County Clerk's Office. We, um, we have been through quite a tumultuous period, grabbed headlines for all the wrong reasons, but I'm proud to come here and say that there have been um, a, a great work at all levels uh, in the county to bring this very important office back online, and I'm very honored to be able to play a, a small role in that, but as much as the politician in me would love to take credit for it, it really is the 90 people who uh, make up the, the frontline workers and the supervisors of uh, this office, and they really have delivered Yeomans have done a yeoman's job, delivered excellent public service through very, very trying times, endured things that nobody should have to endure at the workplace, but uh, through it all, uh, held it together. And I'm proud to say that our metrics are back in line and we're, we're well positioned to achieve future excellence and continue to serve uh, the public and uh, our local partners like Chesterfield Township. So um, I also wanted to share with you well, one program we've been able to restart is our clerk's mobile office and um, which is bringing the services that are available at the downtown Mount Clemens office uh, to every area of the county. Uh, we are going to be in Chesterfield here at these offices on December 19th from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. You can do everything from um, ordering uh, vital records uh, to applying for a concealed pistol license, uh, getting deeds, um, registering to vote, all that kind of stuff, uh, all at the mobile office. We've had a great response. Uh, that'll be our 16th and final one of 2019, and um, it's really part of bringing services to make sure that proximity to our county offices in Mount Clemens are never a barrier to receiving excellent service. So I um, wanted to share that with you. Um, Without going into too much detail, uh, the, the, the county clerk's office is really four different divisions. It's our elections department, which deals, works closely with our, our counterparts at the local level. Um, the, the local clerks, as you know, administer the elections. We are help out on the front end in terms of ordering ballots and proofing ballots and programming machines. And on the back end, we do the elections audits and the canvassing, uh, but really take a back seat to the great work that our local clerks do, including uh, Madam Clerk here, um, Clerk Barry. Um, we have our vital records, uh, which are birth certificates, marriage licenses, concealed pistol licenses, uh, notary publics, and, um, and all that, death, death records as well. Uh, our register of deeds, anytime you buy or sell a piece of property, a home or a business, in order to claim your ownership, you register those deeds with our office. And we have over 8 million images um, dating back to the early 1800s. Um, was just out in Ray Township and presented a deed to a, a centennial farm in Ray Township where um, 
There it was literally a granting from the United States government to a homesteader who came out shortly after Michigan became a state and claimed land in Ray Township. And so we have all records going back that far and, and that deed in, in fact was signed by uh, Andrew Jackson. So it goes back that far. We have historic records as well as um, mortgages from today. And then um, lastly, we're the clerk of the court for the 16th Circuit of Mount Clemens. We run the jury pool among other things. Uh, we have about 15,000 people that serve on juries every, uh, every year. I can't get you out of jury service, I'm sorry. Uh, Ch Chief Judge Jim Biernett is the only one that can really do that. And um, we can defer your service, but uh, it's really, really hard to get out of it altogether. So I um, wanted to share that with you. I also want to say I've, I've been proud to be active in the greater Chesterfield area, uh, participated in a Macomb ISD uh, distance learning um, uh, experience with Great Oaks Elementary. And we talked about uh, voting and civic duty. Um, I mentioned the mobile office coming up in Chesterfield. We've had a mobile office in New Haven and a mobile office in New Baltimore. Uh, in July and August, respectively. Was proud to join um, Trustee Demink um, and the library board in swearing in two new members of the library board uh, last week. And then was a proud uh, to be featured at the Anchor Bay Chamber of Commerce Business by the Bay to join uh, Mr. Supervisor there. And unfortunately, he had to listen to a lot of this stuff the second time tonight because I said most of it then too. So, but um, really just want to close out and say, you know, um, I'm, uh, I'm proud, to, proud to serve here and in this capacity and hope that we can, um, you, you'll call on me if I, if I can ever be of service. I won't, in particular, want to give a shout out to my former colleague, um, Madam Chair Vosberg. Um, we'll always have a special connection because uh, we both love black licorice and not many people like black licorice, but I've kind of adopted it that uh, I kind of feel like I'm sometimes like black licorice. Not everybody likes black licorice, but the people that like it really like it, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, without further ado, um, I'll adhere to the five Bs and, and just say once again, thanks for having me and, and um, please don't hesitate to call me if I can be of service. Happy to answer any questions um, and I'll stay for as long as I want, but I do have to answer to a, a, lar a higher authority, namely my wife. I was told I have to help out with math homework tonight, so I got to be home uh, a little bit after eight, so. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, Trustee Joseph. Yeah, Clerk Miller, I just wanted to. Uh... Oh, come on back. Oh. Trustee Joseph's got, got one for you. Sorry, no question. Just uh, wanted to say thank you. Um, you've done a great job over in the clerk's office. It was a real, uh, real difficult place that you inherited there. Um, your office is back, uh, and the uh, staff are excellent. The uh, kiosk that greets the uh, people when they come in really is very helpful um, to sort of direct you on what uh, area you need to be in. Um, also, just Leaving uh, downtown Mount Clemens, sometimes I get a little sad, you know, I'm the, I'm the last car in the parking structure and I'm pulling out and uh, just when I'm feeling a little bit down, I see you walking up Main Street, you're ending your day. So I know you're there late, you're working very hard. Um, you're also very involved in our community, just uh, everything from trunk or treat or, uh, you know, you're, you're here. And I appreciate the effort that you put in to go across the county and deliver the county service to individual municipalities and uh, keep working to let people know that the clerk's office is up and running uh, properly again. So great job over there and thank you. Thank you, sir. I appreciate that. Thank Trustee you. Trustee Vosberg. Thank you, Mr. Supervisor. Uh, thank you. Oh, I keep calling you commissioner all the time. No problem, Madam Chair. Clerk Miller. <laughs> um, one of the services that your office is part of is the notary process. And that's something that notaries don't have to renew every year. They don't, and we forget sometimes how to go through that process. And I was just talking to someone who recently renewed. They went to the office and knew to go to the newer office, and, but didn't know what to do. And the security person actually gave him all the information. So I was impressed that even people that aren't required to know all that stuff are very willing to help. So I wanted you to know about Thanks that. Thanks for that. A real, real brief story, if I may. So there was a, um, a high-profile lawsuit during the, the tenure of my predecessor about the ability to have metal detectors in our Talmer building, 120 North Main, where our vital records and register of deeds are at. And because that's not a, a federal building or a court building, um, it was found that they can't have metal detectors there because people can can carry in that in that space. And so the metal detectors were removed, but the um, the the compensation, I guess the the the. Um, the fallback position was was having these um, their gray coats. They're not the, not our blue coat security, but they're gray coats. They have sidearms. But we have been blessed with the two most uh, 
um, friendly uh, security guards there who kind of act as our concierge and as people come in they direct them to the kiosks or they you know have uh, answered questions and gotten quite knowledgeable so that's something like it it, uh, it wasn't how people had it intended but it ended up being a better outcome than we could have ever imagined thank you thank you mr. supervisor board Item five, department reports. Any departments wishing to update the board or the public, now is the time. Trustee DeMink. Quick few announcements. The 25th anniversary of the Chesterfield Township Library, they're having an anniversary gala, dinner and fundraising celebration on Friday, November 8th, from 5.30 to 8.30 at McRae Harbor in the St. Clair Ballroom. Includes a buffet dinner, silent auction, and cash bar. Tickets are $40. Entertainment is by the Bayside Jazz of the Anchor Bay High School and the New Baltimore Interfaith Choir. Proceeds from this event will go to the building fund for a new public library. Parks and Rec. Seniors ages 55 and older are encouraged to come and explore the Chesterfield Senior Summer Center. Excuse me. Membership is free and a number of awareness, wellness, fitness trips, and social activities are taking place. Center is open from 8 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. Monday through Friday. Join us on a number of fun trips this fall. We take care of the transportation. Register to avoid the waiting list for upcoming trips include Parade Company Tour, Jurassic World Live, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, and A Christmas Carol. Kids ages four and older are invited to come out and play for us on Friday, November 8th from 6 to 8 p.m. It's a sure. Lego party designed for free play. Bring your favorite Lego set to watch the Lego Movie 2. Parents can stay too. Cost is $5 for resident and 7 for non-resident. That's all I have. Thank you. Trustee Anderson. Thank you. Just a reminder again, this Thursday, October 25th, between uh, 6 and 9 p.m., the Chesterfield Township Historical Society will be holding their uh, harvest dinner. There's a 50-50 raffle, auctions and giveaways. Tickets are $25 each and are available at the treasurer's office here at the building. Clerk Berry. Thank you, Mr. Supervisor. Just some uh, updates regarding the upcoming election on November the 5th. Again, anyone who resides in the Anchor Bay School District does have an election on November the 5th. The last day to request an absentee ballot to be mailed to you is Saturday, November the 2nd at 2 o'clock. Our office will be open until 4 o'clock that day to service requests. Uh, register voters. You will also be able to register up to and including election day, but there are special uh, rules with that. If you do vote, uh, excuse me, register on election day, please contact the clerk's office if you have any questions regarding that. Also, a reminder that November's regularly scheduled board meeting that is normally scheduled for the first and third Tuesdays of the month, which would be November the 5th, due to the election. That meeting is being moved and has been moved to November the 7th, which is a Thursday. So the next regularly scheduled board meeting will be on Thursday, November the 7th. Thank you. A couple of quick ones on from my end. One is the Jefferson Road Bridge. The 27th date is not looking like the open to traffic date is going to, uh, they're going to be able to make that happen. There is going to be a delay. The contract still says the 27th, um, but it's looking like that's going to be a little bit delayed. I wouldn't expect uh, too much more. There's a high probability that you'll see Jefferson Road, the new, the new piece there, open first to over by Point Lakeview um, a little bit sooner, and then that bridge fully opened to traffic shortly thereafter. 24-mile road sidewalk started east of Gratiot. And a quick shout out, there'll be more at this at our next meeting. Our, our budget for 2019 just received a GFOA budget award and I want to congratulate Director Bauer for that. Moving on to the consent agenda. All items under, under the consent agenda are considered routine by the board and will be enacted in one motion. There is no separate discussion of these items. If discussion of any item is required by a board member, it will be removed from the consent agenda and considered separately. Public comments on the consent agenda are permitted. We have a motion to approve the consent agenda. Motion to approve the consent agenda as stated. Motion by Clerk Barry. Support. Support by Trustee Domingue. Mr. Supervisor, I would ask that uh, consent agenda item B uh, be removed uh, from the consent agenda. 
Motion to uh, Clerk Barry, we amend your motion to remove the agenda. Motion amended to approve the consent agenda with the removal of item 6B, approval of the agenda from the consent agenda. Discussion. Discussion from the public. Motion to approve the consent agenda with exception of 6B, which is the agenda. Clerk Barry, please call the roll. I have a question. Oh, yes. Just wondering what the reason is for that. I'm sure we'll. Yep. Yeah, I'd be happy to tell you now, or I can tell you when it's on the regular agenda, whichever you like, Mr. Supervisor, which, whichever way you want to go. Now, now it's fine. Okay. The uh, the reason for the request is that there was an agenda item on our October eighth uh, board meeting, uh, specifically dealing with uh, APO twelve two thousand nineteen involving disciplinary action uh, and a request to adopt the resolution. Um, that motion was postponed until October 22nd and I didn't see it on our regular township agenda and uh, was wondering, uh, you know, one, if we should have that there because we made a motion to postpone. There was also some additional request for uh, uh, an opinion from our attorney and the insurance uh, as the basis for the postponement. Um, so I guess if the uh, need is for more time, we should at least address that in our regular agenda and then uh, okay, postpone so we can, it. Okay, so we can discuss that if, when it gets back to that item. I yeah, just that it was I'm, just, I'm comfortable with it that. It just didn't sound, I mean, I was trying to figure out the reason. Thank okay, you. whichever way you want to go. That's the first no, one no. for the agenda now. No. We can the, wait. The agenda yeah. not getting approved. Yep. Uh, motion by Clerk Barry support by Trustee Domingue to approve the consent agenda minus item 6B, approval of the agenda. Clerk Barry, please call the roll. Clerk Barry, aye. Trustee Domingue. Aye. Trustee Anderson. Aye. Trustee Joseph. Aye. Trustee Vosberg. Aye. Treasurer LaFada. Aye. Supervisor Acovetti. Aye. Motion passes. Item 6B, approval of the agenda. Do I have a motion? Move to approve. Motion by Trustee Vosberg. Second. Word by Clerk Barry. Discussion. Um, Clerk Barry, maybe you could answer <coughs> the question. And Director Duchesne is here. Email was sent to the board. That item was pulled and removed from consideration and maybe the clerk can talk about the making of the agenda piece of it. And that was the reason f that it does not appear on the agenda is that the request, the original requester or submitter of the item uh, withdrew uh, his request. Uh, just to follow up, I think the, um, the concern that I had and maybe just from a the reason that I asked for it to go this route is I actually received an email from a resident um, inquiring about why it wasn't there. So um, our residents aren't going to have access to township emails. They're not going to know. Um, so if it was a, an issue involving, um, you know, something that this resident who, who was present at the October 8th meeting wanted to see what the attorney's opinion was, what our insurance carrier's opinion was, and so forth. So they come to the, 20, the meeting today, and then it's not on the agenda. Um, can we, from a parliamentary standpoint, just sort of wipe it off, uh, you know, wipe it off the books, if you will, or should we address that, you know, on the record? Uh, so the request to remove it and discuss, um, is it the position now that we can just wipe, you know, we could withdraw the motion without a board meeting? Uh, so we had the agenda item, we postponed I, I, I'm it. I'm not really sure who you're asking. The, um, the responsibility of making and publishing the agenda is, yes. lies in the clerk's office. Okay, I guess from a, like an open meeting standpoint, are we okay to postpone an agenda item until the 22nd and then remove it? I think Township Council would probably like to weigh in on that. <clears throat> you're, well, you're not violating the Open Meetings Act, but if the board voted to place it on tonight's agenda and it's not there, only the board would be able to remove it. In other words, you can't unilaterally take off an item that the board has, a majority of the board has voted to place on for consideration so I mean to shortcut this we're here now and apparently it was supposed to be on tonight if there's a reason why it's not going to be somebody should make a motion to, to, to permanently remove it from the agenda and unless you're expecting it's going to come back but I, my recollection of that discussion was your labor attorney and your insurance carrier were going to weigh in on this open carry issue for employees and 
that's all I, I haven't been involved in any other communications since that board meeting. Director Duchesne, I'm going to shed some light on the email sent to the board um, day, after, day after the last meeting. Yes, sir. Um, in, I had a conversation with Labor Council. They did follow up with a letter that I provided to you regarding their position. I don't have anything else from insurance. There was a fairly recent statement that was read at the last meeting that still continues to be accurate. Um, we haven't asked uh, current insurance council or potentially changed insurance uh, uh, advisors tonight for any other information. So I requested it not be acted on as an administrative procedural matter because of the further consideration of how to best address this subject, how to best address the disciplinary rules. So I, I do request the board take no action on this item, APO, I think 12, that was submitted at this time. That, that is my recolle recollection. An email was sent to the entire board um, that you're withdrawing the item. It is no longer under consideration. And I'm not sure if you heard from any board members until just now, but two weeks have kind of gone by since that email was out there. Trustee Joseph. Yeah, the email doesn't address my concern, and that's the problem. This is a board action. Um, so a subordinate of, of yours, Mr. Supervisor, is not the board. So he can't withdraw a motion that was set uh, for uh, a meeting on October 22nd. I, can, uh, I, I appreciate his position, but a board member should address his position and then make the request to withdraw. What, what, what's, your, what's your request? Would you like to put it on the agenda as item 12B or 7? Well, right now, my, 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 right now, I guess my inquiry is what, what are we following in terms of board rules? Uh, because there's a very clear board rule. Uh, the, the board took action, placed it on the agenda for the 22nd, and then there's no action taken uh, except an email from a subordinate um, which doesn't supersede board rules. So I guess I'm just looking for the procedure here and an understanding of what, what we're going to do with this, with this item. I would make a motion to permanent with, with, permanently withdraw the item from consideration. Support? Discussion? We have a motion on the table to approve the agenda, so you don't want to put it on the agenda. You want to, uh, I'm just very confused. I'm sorry. I, 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 I don't know what you're looking for here. You had, you had two weeks with, with the email out there to have a discussion with Clerk Barry, pick up the phone, send an email. Or I don't want to be change. lectured, Mr. Supervisor. Or, I'm, not, I'm not lecturing. I'm just I, trying I to just figure really out what, what, what your end game here is. I, I'll tell you. Um, do you want it removed from the agenda? Do you want discussion on it tonight? We can, because we can remedy all those situations. You're, you're asking, uh, just, just ask what you want to ask. Um, Mr. Supervisor, the motion was passed that it would be on tonight's agenda. No. Answer. Where is it? That's, that's I guess, where Answer is it? Answer on that. I will we'll make a motion. Here. Seven zip. I will make a motion to place. Correction. Yeah. Seven zip. Item. Hold on. Let me go, let me go back through mine. Item 7D. You have a point of order. You have a motion on the table. I would like to amend the motion on the table to include item 7D from the October 8th board meeting, which is to approve recommended changes to APO order number 04 2018 board rules and. Well, I'm, so, I'm, I'm sorry. Hold on one second. Item. I would like to make a motion. I would like to ask the motion maker to amend their motion to add item 7E from the October 8th. 2019 board, me board meeting, which is to recommend to approve Administrative Procedure Order 12-2019 Disciplinary Action and Adopt Resolution 2019-34. Would the mo motion maker, which was Trustee Vosberg, support that agenda? Oh, we're, we're, we're disregarding the we're, motion that was made by Clerk Barry? Or wasn't that specific? Yes, that, that uh, well, I don't think to amend the motion to remove it because it wasn't on the agenda. That's so fine. I think, I think so you that motion's gone? That's yes, I, I will accept that to add that, include the agenda with that additional item. Is there continued support? Continued support. Discussion on the revised motion. Mr. Supervisor, could you, could you go through that motion again? Motion to add, add the item that Trustee Joseph brought up to be added to the agenda, onto the agenda. Discussion. Motion by Trustee Vosberg, support by Clerk Barry to approve the agenda with the addition 
of the postponed item regarding disciplinary action from the October 8th meeting. Clerk Berry, please call the roll. Trustee Vosper. Aye. Clerk Berry, aye. Trustee Anderson. Aye. Trustee Joseph. Aye. Trustee Demink. Aye. Treasurer <laughs> Lafada. Aye. Supervisor Ecovetti. Aye. That item will be 7-H. 7-H. Regular agenda, item 7-A. Approval for Supervisor Ecovetti to execute the Brannenburg Park Shoreline Restoration Project Implementation Agreement Modifications to sub recipient agreement between Chesterfield Township and the Great Lakes Commission and to appropriate $169,874 of township funds toward the grant for the project. A total implementation amount of $884,874 and to appropriate $58,000 for the completion of the pathway connecting the Jefferson Road bike path to the shoreline. Do I have a motion? Motion to approve as stated. Motion by Clerk Barry. Support. Support by Trustee Vosper. Director Sonnenberg. Good evening. Um, this is a project we've been working on for quite some time um, with our project partners, OHM. We have some representatives here that are going to walk you through a PowerPoint that they put together, kind of walking you through the steps of the project, where you're at, and where we're going. So I would like to in introduce uh, Valerie and Steve from OHM. And unfortunately, Eric, who's been a fantastic project partner with the Great Lakes Commission, he's up speaking at Mackinac this morning. So he was going to make every effort to be here, but I told him, when you're at Mackinac, you stay at Mackinac. We can, we can do it without you. So I'm going to turn it over to Stephen and Valerie, and they'll kind of walk you through the presentation that we put together for you. And then at the end, we can go through some questions and some more details. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, member of the board. Thank you. Uh, just to recap, so I'm Steve Siklich. Uh, with OHM, and this is Valerie Novice, also with OHM, and as Josh mentioned, an integral part of this project with the Great Lakes Commission is Eric Ellis. Unfortunately, he couldn't be here, but he's really the, the kind of the program leader um, that is the conduit with the funding agency for this project. So, uh, I, last time I was here, uh, we, we were talking about some, some permits for this project that we needed to get approved, and we really just touched on the highlights of this project, and, and today we're going to try to emphasize a little more detail on this project. So, just to recap, of uh, the project partners, uh, there's a lot of them. So the funding is being provided by NOAA. Uh, obviously the EPA is involved. And it's being managed by the Great Lakes Commission. Uh, obviously OHM, we're the design engineer. And then we have collaborative partners with uh, Eagle and the DNR and Chesterfield Township. So there's a, a number of project partners and uh, it's, been, it's been a very good process thus far. So the project back background, Brandenburg Park, it's a 17 acre parcel. Uh, it's got a lot of great real estate. Approximately um, $890,000 was made available uh, through the GLRI fund. So now there's a number of projects uh, that the Great Lakes Commission is working on. Um, the Great Lakes uh, Restoration Initiative is just one phase of that. I know there's, there's multiple projects that they're working on, but um, for this particular project in Chesterfield, 800, up to $890,000 have been made available for design and construction. Um, and that really include some target areas. So, so everything in this area is part of the St. Clair Detroit River system, um, which uh, GLC has entered into agreement with NOAA uh, to receive funding, it's federal funding. And there's some, some core target areas, one of which is habitat and restoration. And that's where this project falls, is in that bucket of funding. So there's other core areas that they, they distribute money to. Uh, this particular project uh, focuses habitat and restoration. Um, and, and just to kind of highlight um, something that uh, NOAA and GLC have um, shared with us about this project. So they, they consider this project a showcase for the U.S. side of Link St. Clair. And it will be highly beneficial to include biological monitoring to capture the impact of restoration as, uh, as well as other communities and partners in the region assess their needs. So this is a very um, a good area. You can see kind of in the overall view here, a lot of good shoreline frontage there, a lot of good real estate. And, and there's a lot of other area, uh, communities in this area that can also benefit from, from doing things like this. So nothing too much to talk about here. It's just kind of an overview of the current condition of the park. Uh, we get into a little more of the uh, troubling information. So we have a, uh, a seawall that's failing. Uh, there's been a lot of erosion uh, that's occurred from, from heavy you know, storms and wave action. Um, so that's one of the goals of this project is going to be to, to fix that. Uh, so I think the picture kind of speaks for itself there. 
Some of the key highlights uh, that I mentioned, so there's 740 feet of hardened shoreline, and the hardened shoreline basically means it has seawall. So there's no direct access to the lake. Uh, you can pretty much walk up to the edge of the shoreline there, the seawall, and that's about as far as you can get. Uh, from a habitat perspective, it's light. You know, there's not a lot of, uh, you know, reptiles, birds, fish that are kind of flocking to a seawall. Uh, so, so one of the objectives of this project is to kind of give more uh, vegetation, more nooks and crannies for, for these creatures to, to really flourish. Um, so, the, so the highlights, uh, 740 feet of hardened uh, seawall is going to be uh, removed, uh, partially removed, and replaced with something more natural, uh, which the picture on the left there, um, we do have a couple of these areas that are called rock sills, and it's really just to differentiate uh, the vegetation and, and kind of spaces for creatures to, uh, to really thrive. Um, so, so you'll be able to walk uh, pretty much right up to the water now. You won't have, you know, a seawall there that's going to drop off. Uh, this is going to be kind of a gradual transition to the, to the water line. Um, it's also going to include one and a half acres of um, inshore rehabilitation uh, habitat rehabilitation. So we're going to talk about that a little bit more. I'm not going to get too far into that now, but there's a lot of work in the water that's proposed at this project. Uh, and then just some administrative things that we have to handle pre and post uh, monitoring. So that is essentially what are the conditions now we're going to monitor, and then post construction, what are the conditions? Did we actually improve the situation at the shoreline? And I think it's uh, some of the obvious uh, impacts this is going to bring: sport fishing. Uh, a lot of these habitat areas gonna, are going to create you know nice fish habitats. So there's going to be a lot of increased fishing for um, you know the township. You're going to get uh, for the residents, you're going to get a, a safer shoreline. You're not going to have this failing seawall that, you know, is eroding. Uh, there's a kayak launch, so you'll be able to access the water now, uh, as opposed to just by boat at the nearby launch. Um, and then, you know, from the environmental standpoint, you know, fish and wildlife habitat. Let's bring some more habitat to this area. Uh, update, quick update design. So we are right at 90%. Um, uh, completion. So we've, as I mentioned last time, we've submitted all the permits for this. It's currently sitting in the Army Corps and Eagles uh, desks under review. Um, so funding is 70-30 uh, is kind of how the breakout on design worked. So th this is not a hard and fast split that they've provided, but um, if you look at the dollars spent, about 30% was funded by the township, 70% was, was funded uh, through the Great Lakes Restoration Initiative. And now the fun stuff, I'm going to turn it over to kind of the brains of the operation here. So Valerie Novice is our um, lead designer and project manager in our environmental water resources and group. And she's going to highlight some of the, uh, the technical details of this project and, and some of the fun stuff. Fun brains. Um, thank you for, oh yeah, here. Thank you for having us here tonight. Um, so the next steps is as we're completing design, um, there are a couple of permits that um, this project will need. One from, it's called a joint permit application from the Army Corps and the Department of Environment, Great Lakes and Energy, formerly known as MDEQ. Um, once those permits com come in, we can start uh, the work on the ground. Uh, there's a couple of restrictions. The DNR is, um, has asked to not be touching the water side of this project because they want to, to maintain that, um, that area intact for all the fish and the habitat that is there to be able to recreate in a safe environment that's undisturbed. So no in-water work will occur between, that's actually April 1st through the end of September. You're gonna probably ask when do you actually do the work? Um, they can do the in-water work over the winter and we anticipate that that will and, and can occur. Um, Steve already mentioned about the GLRI funds. Um, the implementation dollars that the Great Lakes Restoration Initiative has uh, approved is about $715,000. And our current engineer's opinion of construction costs is right around $750,000. And um, it, we have seen some bid prices come in from contractors kind of sliding based on market supply and demand. Um, there is a chance that bids come in, could come in slightly higher and then we've looked at possibilities to scale the project to address that, to not go over that, um, that anticipated cost at this time. Um, just a quick overview, this is the, um, the big picture proposed um, park master plan and this is just one piece of that um, master plan and again this is the in-water work and then right along the shoreline. 
Um, this is a bird's eye view of what the proposed project will look like when it's completed. A couple of features to point out starting on the left side of this image. Um, there is a proposed kayak launch that will be kind of flat flagstone steps leading down to the water just on the north side of <laughs> All right, so here is where their proposed kayak launches. Um, the rock sills that Steve mentioned and you saw a photo of, those would be um, in this area here, and then again on the northern edge of the park. Most of the work on the shore side is going to occur in the area exactly where that failing seawall is right now, and it will be um, cut off and then backfilled with um, aquatic vegetation, emergent vegetation, and then upland vegetation. Um, right here, these features that you see are breakwaters, and the intent of those is exactly what it sounds like, to break the wave action and protect that shoreline that will be naturalized in the process. Um, the, where all the habitat is going to occur is in what we call these deep water depression areas. Um, so behind those breakwaters, we'll be excavating roughly about nine feet deep and putting in some um, woody habitat and different slab stone features for the fish and all the habitat to, um, to have shelter and to recreate. Different angle, this is if you were standing, um, on, well, standing on the water or just off the edge of the pier um, or right on the breakwater um, looking at the shoreline. So um, again, you, you see this um, shore restoration area and then you see some of the woody debris structures and then these are um, slab stone features. Different angles, so we are now um, back on shore, just between the, um, the facility and uh, the pier. So over here would be the pier, and then this is looking north along the shoreline. There'll be a, um, a, a walking trail that's part of the project, and then, <coughs> excuse me, um, the, the vegetation here. There will also be a walking path, a flagstone walking path that will take um, park users from um, the park area down to the water in a safe manner. Here's a picture of that um, proposed pathway that will go through the vegetation feature and lead um, the park users down to the water. And I'm gonna turn it back over to Steve to talk about um, the other fun part. So we wanted to also provide just kind of a funding highlight for uh, where this project has been and where it's going. Um, so up on the screen here, as you can see, there's uh, multiple phases. Phase one is design. Uh, we've spent uh, $137,500 to date um, was what was approved by uh, uh, NOAA. So that, now that is not all township funds. So that, some of that is, is obviously the design and engineering costs. Uh, there's also township costs in there. Uh, and then and then Great Lakes Commission also has costs in there. And, and this is just a summary of that. So uh, what, what the feds had provided was a, a 97,500 grant uh, to that, and the township uh, was responsible for 40,000 of that. On the implement, uh, implementation side, uh, the construction costs, including all project management, monitoring, um, observation, uh, administration, are expected to be around, uh, and construction, expected to be around 884,000. 874, uh, and the Fed has approved uh, 715,000 for that effort, and that would leave the township with a uh, match of uh, 169,874. So, in total, for design and construction, we're looking at a project that's just over a uh, million dollars, uh, of which 80% is going to be funded by uh, by NOAA. Scheduling wise, uh, we do have, there's a lot of activities that have to take place uh, between now and actual shovels in the ground and monitoring. So this is kind of just a recap of, of some of the major items. So the in progress stuff, um, one of the requirements uh, of the feds is kind of a quality 
uh, control documents. So that's the QAP item one that's just been approved and uh, signed off by all partners. So that's so that's good. Um, and that's just going to outline kind of the procedures that we're going to undertake throughout the course of this project and what we're going to study and how we're going to study it. Um, monitoring, I think uh, I mentioned that a little bit earlier before. So we're actually going to go out there. We're going to we're going to net some fish. We're going to count fish species. We're going to look at vegetation uh, and other things of that sort. Uh, that was expected to start last week. Uh, unfortunately, we got some some weather issues, so uh, some of the recon was done, but but additional work is needed probably uh, this week into next week as well. And then, as Valerie mentioned, we are uh, already on the books for Eagle and, and Army Corps approval, and we expect that to come back hopefully by the first of the year. Um, we're kind of at their mercy with that as far as whether it's going to be a 30-day review or a 60-day review, um, but we're expecting that to come back. Uh, before the first of the year, or by the first of the year. So what would happen after that, uh, basically, is we have to bid the project. Uh, so obviously, this is kind of a unique project. Um, so we want to get it out as early as possible to the to the potential contractors so they can look at what's needed, you know, schedule resources. Obviously, with winter moving in, there's some arrangements they have to make. Um, so we want to get through that process uh, before the first of the year so they can start looking at, you know, submittals. Um, that they have to, to provide us materials, you know, procurement. Um, so that's going to be the next big item on the, on the list. And then obviously construction. So there's in-water construction. Uh, there's on-land construction. Uh, the window is small for the in-water. It's got to be either before April 1st or after September 30th. Uh, so that's the window we're working here with on that. Um, and then to, to kind of wrap it all up, we want to monitor again. We want to say, you know, we want to show that what improvements we did make have actually generated some additional habitat and, and generated improvement. Um, and then just to kind of highlight, uh, obviously uh, Josh has been a, a great representative and promoter of this project, uh, facilities director with the township. He's available. I know he's been leading uh, kind of the public uh, relations effort on that. And then again, just to mention Eric Ellis, uh, he is the program manager, he is the conduit for NOAA, and the ultimate funder that the, the township is contracting with. Now I know there's going to be some questions, we kind of ran through that uh, year's worth of work uh, really quickly, so uh, we are here to answer any questions that might come up. I thank you for uh, allowing us to share. Trustee Bosper. Thank you, Mr. Supervisor. You had mentioned um, if it goes over the anticipated cost, it'd be a scale, there's things that can be adjusted. Or scaled back is what you meant. Mm -hmm. Does that is that subject to the match? What I'm getting at is, let's say if it's fifty thousand over, can we find fifty thousand somewhere else, or does does our twenty percent in? Yep. So, uh, yeah, that's a good question. And the match is not a hard and fast. Uh, you're required to provide twenty percent. That's just what's the numbers worked out oh, to be. Okay. But so the yeah. match is the, the dollar the amount. Dollar amount is the contribution is from the township. Or whatever. Yep. Um, as long percent of current numbers. But, correct. All right. Anything over that, if we wanted to fundraise or whatever, we you're, could. you're certainly more than welcome to. And as long as we don't um, remove the goals of the project for, for NOAA's standpoint, which is the habitat restoration, as long as we don't remove those items, uh, they will still commit their funding, okay. their same funding. And so I just want to put in a plug for mm -hmm. and do not remove the kayak launch. Can't just <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Supervisor. Clerk Barry. Thank you. Uh, I was noticing that um, some of the pathways that were there as I was looking at some of the renderings, um, maybe I just couldn't see it from there, but I assume because obviously it's a federal project and we also have to comply, um, there is some handicap accessibility there and compliance with um, the Americans with Disabilities Act. So my questions to you are, where are those features? Um, and did I just not see them on the renderings? Um, I just want to make sure I didn't see any things like benches, I didn't see any handrails, anything like that. Could you address that for me? Correct. And you know, down on the shoreline, there aren't features that exist of that nature, just because that's where the habitat zone is. Uh, but getting to that shoreline, uh, that pathway would all be constructed within ADA guidelines. Um, so there are no features as far as you know benches and, and whatnot. But uh, but the pathway going to that restoration area would be ADA compliant. So we'll have the handrails and things of that nature, even though they didn't show up in the renderings, that those elements will be there. Yeah, and you know, this obviously is, uh, is just a rendering of what we anticipate the project sure. to look like, but, uh, but getting to, yeah, getting to the, the habitat area will be, everything will be ADA compliant. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Trustee Anderson. Yeah, just two, two, two questions, I'll, I'll ask them both, let you address them. The first one is with the 
the fluctuation in water we see in the Great Lakes. Um, first question is, your engineering here is going to uh, uh, have long-term uh, stability as far as what's being put in in that project. And my second question would be, I'm looking at the township share here of uh, 20 percent, I guess, 169,000 in change. I know there was a remark that if costs went up, it'd be it would be uh, something would be scaled back. But is there a possibility that the township would see a larger increase in its amount uh, that it, you know added on to this project as it moves along? So um, I'll answer that question first. Um, so that is a fixed contribution. Um, the budget for the project is is going to be our target, and it's just a matter of what quantity of features we get in. Um, so there's certainly other stuff we've we've shown to the group, um, whether it be additional landscaping, you know, beautification items, um, some other um, kind of losing uh, the term, but um, some other features at the park and maybe benches is an item that you know certainly a township will be willing to to you know or you know that's something that they can you know purchase add to this project. But as far as um, that this is kind of is, is going to be a fixed budget that we're going to target. This is what was approved by NOAA. And that contribution is what also been approved by NOAA. But you want to answer more to that? Yeah, I just want to touch on one thing. One of the big areas that we focused on with this project was scalability. Because as you know, with the Weber Paddle Park project, when you're underfunded on a project and you got, you know, you're held to a certain standard. That's why we approached this the way we did. First, we went into design and engineering, and the second phase was being able to scale back some of the break walls and making sure that we had this, that the shoreline was funded first, and then we would implement the breakwaters and see where we got. But the goal here is start with the shoreline, complete the shoreline back, and then start with the outwater, in water habitat. So we would have that scalability. Because you don't really know, as we've learned, until you go out to bid, the market's going to tell us really where this project's at. We, we did our homework, we did our numbers, we, did, we put everything together the right way, but until we go out to bid, you know, we're going to find out. But we made sure we put that component in there. It was one of the key components from the start. Yeah, follow up? Yeah, well, um, just, just to follow, yeah. So, in other words, we'll watch this like a wetter. So we'll watch, watch the financial process like we do it with our own income with our families, right? Right. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Watch it like a hawk, and, and that's one of the lessons learned from the group. Uh, do another a project like that. The more effort you put in, uh, making sure that that things are constructed the way you've designed, the better control you have over those costs. Um, to answer your other question about the design and, and the water levels, uh, that was a significant concern um, that we've discussed throughout this project. And I know Valerie is here who has a heck of a lot more background on that. But in general, we did design this to the high water mark. Um, that was approved by all the agencies involved. But the features of this project, especially the habitat um, areas, there's variability. So when the water level is high, we have peat features that are going to be visible when that water level is high. When the water level is real low, we're also going to have other features that become available when that water level is low. So there is some variability in the design. Uh, of the features that they're going to be visible at certain water levels. Um, is there anything else you want to add to that, Valerie? Or? No, I would just like to touch on, you know, one of the lessons learned, just to expand on some of the research we did for this project. So we toured other projects up in the St. Clair River and areas like that, and we saw what high water did to those projects. And that was one of the things they pointed out. Without all the planning and design, we were actually fortunate that we're designing this during high water for those very reasons. Some of the other projects along the St. Clair River were designed at low water, and they're having problems where they thought their habitat was up high enough, and now they're having issues where some of that habitat's washing away, and they actually had to pull some of it out. So we were fortunate, actually, that we did this project during high water, so we could, you know, you can do all the planning in the world, but until you can actually see it in reality, it's hard to explain what water can do. And we're all aware of that now from the other sites that we toured and looking at this. And we got some really good storm footage that I took from last fall when the water was high and with the wave action that we provided to the engineers to even look at that. Because as you know, that shoreline there um, gets pounded in the fall with waves. So we even took some of that into consideration. It, it, it's hard to see, but one of the storm events is kind of the backdrop on this slide right here. And you can see the waves are you know, a foot, two feet over the wall. Um, so I, I didn't provide a picture of that exactly, but, but that, is, that is a picture of Brandenburg uh, in the backdrop there during a storm event. Treasure, oh, I'm, I'm sorry, just, it looks like Valerie's got a Just one quick note I would add. Um, Steve mentioned it is designed, um, the breakwaters are designed to be slightly above the ordinary high water mark. That's a term used by um, the governmental agencies as what is that long-term ordinary high water mark average, and then we designed slightly above that. 
Um, and right now, the water level would not be above that. Um, so we felt comfortable at that point. Um, even if water levels at time come above that, the breakwaters are all the way down to the lake bottom. So there will be significant wave action that's mitigated through that structure, even if water does happen to slightly overtop the structures. So I think um, we're good. Move on to Treasurer Lafada. Thank you. Um, on uh, the uh, budget section, uh, it states that the uh, total matching funds by Chesterfield's $169,874. Um, what about the 40,000 40, uh, matching funds for the initial design and the 25,000 for the water quality? That's actually going to change this number. And for budgeting purposes, the project number is out there and it's already got $113,490 worth of expenditures against it. So these numbers don't match too well. So the and I would agree the original cost 40,000 for the design are not part of that 169 so the 169 is an addition to the 40 that's already been spent um, the monitoring cost or the, uh, that we approved the board approved a couple months ago that is covered by the feds um, so the GLRI uh, funds are going to be covering that monitoring so it's not going to be a, a township contribution but portion. there's still 40,000 out there originally that should be part of the 169 for budgetary numbers how much we so yeah, and if you want to, yeah, slide to that screen. So all, all together. Because um, the only reason why is I'm assuming this project number is not going to change, and it's going to show expenditures against it. Mm -hmm. And it's going to, it's going to, sh and uh, I know we've applied for two payments, and we've re received two payments. But like I said, when we go in and look at our project spend expenditures, and we look at these numbers, they're not, they're not going to, they're not going to coincide. Correct. So, so, on, so on, on this slide here, you see that um, there's a total um, cost allocation that includes both phases, design and implementation. So it will be, yeah, it's two separate phases, um, two separate grants that are being provided by GLWRI. So the first one, yeah, 40,000, it is there. And it's going to be, in addition to that, it's going to be 169,000 on, on top of that. So the total project cost to the township is, is estimated at 209,000. And the 25,000 for the water quality testing is going to, is going to come back. So that is uh, being funded by uh, NOAA. Okay. Um, there's one other question, uh, timing. Uh, there was a timeline in the initial request for engineering. Uh, is there going to be a, an updated timeline because uh, as of today, we should be complete. Yep. So we have um, we have an updated timeline that's been provided to all the project management team members. Uh, I can certainly provide that again. It's been updated for construction. With the high water, the Army Corps um, was kind of behind on getting to the permit review. So we we did hit our September target for design completion. Uh, but as far as getting that approval from those agencies, uh, we're we're still working on that. Uh, but we can certainly provide you more detail. I know we do have one that, that has been generated for this project. And I, I just have one other question. Will the timing have when we're going to submit uh, payments to NOAA for reimbursement? Um, so I don't know what the exact date is. Maybe, Josh, you would have a better idea. But on a monthly basis would be the intent to submit those to, um, to, to GLC for reimbursement and to NOAA for reimbursement. Thank you. Trustee Joseph. Thank you. Um, I think a couple of the questions I had um, regarding the scaling uh, have, have kind of been addressed. Um, I'm a little concerned about the cost of, because of the, um, the, time, the timeline, uh, specifically the ability to uh, you know, do in water work and what that does to the um, uh, vendors that will be doing the work. Um, we've seen, as was mentioned, um, you know, with Weber Paddle, we, we had engineering, we had, we had sort of done our homework in terms of what we anticipated the cost it wasn't even recognizable when it came back and that had to do with sort of market uh, demand and what the uh, providers could do so uh, it sounds like we've taken that into consideration here as far as you know scaling back certain parts of the project um, for me and I guess this probably is a little skew but for me um, I think the project started out in its infancy when we were trying to determine what to do with a failing seawall um, and what the cost associated with uh, you know just just trying to make the, uh, the space exactly the way it is <coughs> with replacing the seawall uh, this is clearly a cost effective uh, route to go because I don't think we could replace the seawall for what our contribution you know uh, matches so uh, the question then becomes 
whether or not this is the project for that space. Um, I've heard from a lot of residents that are really interested in uh, something a lot different. That is not a habitat uh, for fish, but more of a habitat for people and the, the uh, benefit of having a, a beachfront, if you will. Uh, that doesn't seem to be an option here. This isn't what you do. Uh, I will commend the team that put this together because uh, it looks like a lot of the uh, factors have been uh, you know, looked into and uh, certainly it addresses the problem that we currently have which is a dangerous seawall so uh, commend the team for that for me personally um, it's it's not the project that i would like to see there but uh, uh, be that as it may great job on the presentation any further comments from the board uh, i would like oh. to touch on one other item real quick so um just there's a fifty-eight thousand dollar request along with this and i just wanted to touch on that really quick so you can see, um, and this just goes in, I just wanted to touch on some of the planning that went into this. You can't really see, but this design over here was one of our initial designs when it comes to phasing and the overall construction and how we would get trucks in and out without tearing up our new asphalt, which we plan on. Our plan for now is actually shutting down the park in uh, January and keeping it closed to Memorial Day while we do this work. And while we do this work, we're gonna also bring back to you, we're gonna stripe the parking lot and do a lot of the maintenance work while we can keep some traffic off those areas. But while we were looking at this and trying to keep trucks off the asphalt, in this design to the left, it's hard to see, but there's a road, temporary roadway that we were gonna put in. Well, when we started looking at this, it made sense for us. If we're gonna put all this stone in to make a temporary roadway, it only makes sense to take that temporary roadway to the far end of the park, wind it through the park, and then once the base is in for the roadway, we could cap it with asphalt, and now we have a walking path that goes from OHM's proposed walking path here all the way back to the front corner of Brandenburg. With a pointer? So I just can you, can you, Trustee Joseph asked you to show it with the pointer, sure. the, the red line there. Well, that's okay. You can see my hands are shaking right there. So this area here, that you see right there, yeah. that represents example of where we want to put the roadway. So instead of running our infrastructure traffic through the park basically this way, we would wind our temporary road down here. We would use that same temporary road, cap that asphalt with the $58,000, and then we'd have a new pathway going to the park. Because one of the goals for this project is to get people down by the waterfront. Any further comments on the board before I bring it up to the public trustee, Domink? I think All we good. I, for Mr. one, Rich, I have a quick question. I know you're oh, going to recap go the project. Ahead. Just a very quick question on the path. The, does the path uh, does the path leave the uh, the existing uh, bike path heads down? Does it end at the waterfront? Does it come back? So, is so what we're looking at now, just to start, is we want to start connecting some trails. So our goal is to get us the OHM project, the, the fish habitat project, includes a path that goes from the pier, the sidewalk here, to the walking path. What we want to do is continue that path back down to the bike trail this way. So our path, our fifty-eight thousand dollar proposal, adds this path here. Included in our fish habitat proposal is this section here. So essentially, what it would do is you could come down through this trail right around here and go all the way back down the path. Great. So you'd have a loop this way. Yeah, got it. Thank you. You're Further comments from the board. Thank you. I want to thank the OHM team, Josh Sonnenberg, Eric Ellis, with Great Lakes Commission, and all of the federal partners um, to get the attention of Eagle, back, back when it wasn't Eagle, <laughs> and um, the federal partners, and for this to move as fast as it, as, it, as it has. On December 18th, it was brought to the board in concept, um, which this board did unanimously approve turning that into a habitat and taking advantage of all of the synergies and the opportunity with the federal level. And that is going to be an, enhan an enhancement for our community. And I do believe that is the, uh, the right fix, especially knowing that there was zero fund dollars available for um, a seawall replacement or any kind of a, a beach in that location. And, and that was discussed back in uh, back in 2018. So I just want to commend the team. I'll bring it up to the public to discuss this item only, 7A, which is the short line restoration. Mr. Miller. Good, go, 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 speak into the microphone, please, so we can hear you. And the folks at home as well. 
I haven't heard half of the presentation. I want to thank, I believe his name is Josh or somebody that had his name up there. And I want to thank these people for coming down here. And I want you to tell them people that you canceled this project for Joe Miller of Chesterfield Township, who's lived here 50 years and paid his taxes. Cancel the project because the lake may go down, a lot of things. And tell them to take the money they've got, $700,000, and go put it on the national debt and leave my lake alone and leave my park alone. And I have no respect, disrespect for you good people you're trying to Joe, make Mr. Miller, deal. make sure you address the board. Yeah, but no disrespect for these people. They're just trying to make a deal. And it's costing me a couple of hundred thousand dollars, even if you get another grant from the federal government. Thank you guys for all your consideration of their time and mine. Thank you. Any further public comments? Thank you, Mr. Miller. Motion by Clerk Berry, support by Trustee Vosberg to approve item 7A as submitted. Clerk Berry, please call the roll. Clerk Berry, aye. Trustee Vosberg. Aye. Trustee Anderson. Aye. Trustee Joseph. No. Trustee Domingue. Aye. Treasurer Lafada. Aye. Supervisor Ekebetti. Aye. Motion passes. Item 7B, approve a recommendation by the Professional Audit Service QBS team to select Plant Moran for the township's annual audit with the following fee scale. 2019, 49,400, 2020, 50,400, 2021, 51,400, 2022, 52,400, and 2023, 53,400 from the general ledger accounts detailed in the agenda. Do I have a motion? Move to approve. Motion by Treasurer LaFosse. Second. Support by Clerk Barry. Discussion. Hi there. Uh, again, this item is to approve the recommendation by the audit QBS team to select Plant Moran for the township's annual audit. It's a yearly agreement with a price guarantee for five years. The price schedule is included also in your packet with 2019 costing 49,400. There were a total of four bidders. Plant Moran was selected based on the strength of their overall proposal. In part, it was their strong reputation and ability as a firm they have a large number of professionals dedicated to their governmental practice that services over 500 governmental organizations. This leads to a high level of institutional knowledge and experience. As GASB changes continue, Plant Moran provides training and assistance regarding the implementation of new accounting pronouncements. We've had the ad added benefit of working with Plant Moran in the past where we have utilized their different areas of expertise with no additional charge, including sales tax we had uh, consulted with them on recently. Lastly, they are cost competitive for the level of service they provide. I attach the price comparison using our current level of yearly audit hours for your review. Does anybody have any questions with this item? Questions for Director Brewer. Comments from the public. Motion by Treasurer Lafada, support by Clerk Berry to approve 77B as submitted. Clerk Berry, please call the roll. Treasurer Lafada. Aye. Clerk Berry, aye. Trustee Anderson. Aye. Trustee Joseph. Aye. Trustee Domingue. Aye. Trustee Vosberg. Aye. Supervisor Ekebetti. Aye. Thank you. Motion passes. 7C, approve a recommendation by the QBS team to select the Decker Agency for the Township's Property and Liability Insurance Carrier. The fee for the 2019-2020 policy year is $183,808 from the general ledger accounts detailed in the agenda. Do I have a motion? Move to approve. Motion by Treasurer Lafada. Support. Support by Trustee Joseph. Discussion. I, oh, this item here, again, was... Um, where the QBS team went out for the township's property and liability insurance. Uh, it was requested that, uh, because we had two bidders on this that were pretty close in all of their, their line items, that they would be able to present something to the board. The, we had posed the question and the board said that, or at least some members said that they would like to hear. Um, so we have both the Decker Agency and Nickel and Sass 
uh, available to make a quick five minute speech on what they have to offer if that's what the board's pleasure is still uh, mr chairman we have a motion we have support i'm content and satisfied with the qbs team's recommendation um i'm i'm completely satisfied and i don't know how we could capture you know a five minute presentation to replace the qbs team i like the qbs team uh you know model in most instances and i like the ability for the qbs team to vet all the questions during their presentation so if the qbs team has brought a recommendation uh, i'm content to to vote based on their recommendation i don't know that a five minute presentation is going to help me uh, really uh, outdo what the QBS team has already done. Thank you. Any further comments from the board? Um, I'd like to bring up Nickel and I'm sorry, what? Nickel and Saf, if you want Nickel, to come Nickel up and first. Nickel and Saf first for, for five minutes and then I'm, we'll do uh, Decker's five minutes after. Well, Mr. Supervisor, I'd like to make a motion to call the question. Motion to call the question by Trustee Joseph. Is there support? Support. Motion by Trustee Joseph. Support by Trustee Anderson to call the question. Clerk Barry, um, please call the roll on the motion to call the question. Trustee Joseph. Aye. Trustee Anderson. Aye. Trustee Domingue. Aye. Trustee Vosper. Aye. Treasurer Lafada. Aye. Supervisor Acovetti. No. Clerk Barry. No. Motion to approve item 7C, which is to approve a recommendation by the QBS team to select the Decker Agency for the Township Property and Liability Insurance Carrier. A fee for 2019-2020 policy year is $183,808 from the general ledger accounts detailed in the agenda. The motion was by Treasurer Lafada, support by Clerk Berry, or support by Trustee Joseph. Clerk Berry, please call the roll. Treasurer Lafada. Aye. Trustee Joseph. Aye. Trustee Anderson. Aye. Trustee Vosper. Aye. Trustee Demink. Aye. Uh, Supervisor Ecovetti. Aye. Clerk Barry. No. Motion passes. Item 7D. Approve a request by the Public Safety Department to paint Quint 1 in the amount of $27,715 from GL 205-340-977. Do I have so a motion? Motion by Trustee Demink. Support. Support by Trustee Vosper. Director Kirsten. Uh, thank you. Um, this is a 75-foot uh, aerial truck that we have in our inventory. We've had it since 2005. It's a uh, fairly well-used truck. It has serviced the township well, and what we would like to do with this item and the next request is to spend some money and uh, refurbish the vehicle, bring it up to uh, current standards, replace and repair uh, some of the damage that has been done to it over the last 14 years, and uh, this project would then extend the life uh, of this vehicle in use within the fire department for at least the next 10 years, similar to what we did to the 100-foot aerial tower a year ago. Any questions for Director Kirsten? Trustee Joseph. Uh, no questions, just a <coughs> comment. Uh, these vehicles were on display during the uh, fire open house, and uh, personally I was very impressed with the uh, work that's been done to maintain them. It was kind of stunning to hear the age of the vehicles and to see them uh, in their condition. I also liked uh, the presentation and the time I got with uh, Chief Miller and just talking about uh, what this upgrade potentially means uh, if the township uh, sort of pivots in terms of equipment and the ability then to take these uh, particular pieces of equipment and uh, sort of take them into the marketplace. They are uh, still able to command a very nice uh, price and if the if the uh, direction in terms of how we uh, you know the fire science involved with uh, matching apparatus to needs changes uh, this upgrade allows us to be uh, in a great very good position in terms of commanding a decent price uh, from a, from another department whose needs might be better met with this so I think it's a great investment and it's a uh, great uh, return on the taxpayers dollars to invest this in the way that you are so uh, great job to the uh, public safety team, and in particular, Chief, your team, Chief Miller, your team over there in the fire department. This is a very nice uh, investment. Any further? Spot on. Any further comments from the board? From the public? 
motion by Trustee Vosper to support by Trustee Domingue to approve seven, item 7D as stated. Clerk Baird, please call the roll. Trustee Domingue. Aye. Trustee Vosper. Aye. Trustee Anderson. Aye. Trustee Joseph. Aye. Treasurer Lafada. Aye. Supervisor Ecovetti. Aye. Clerk Barry. Aye. Motion passes 7E, approve a request by the Public Safety Department to update Quint 1 in the amount of $51,264 from GOL 205-340-977. Support. Do I have a motion? Motion. Motion Support. by Trustee. Domingue, support by Trustee Anderson. Same discussion. Again, this goes along with the previous no. request. This is a separate vendor. Again, we are funneling money into the same truck. Uh, refurbishment, updated equipment, updated uh, um, safety equipment on the vehicle, uh, similar to what we did with the aerial tower and uh, uh, a year ago. To extend the life and service of this vehicle. The same truck. Same, same truck Same, is the same unit to bring it up to speed and, and for another 10-ish years so that we do not have to buy another one of these. Yes. In near, near term. What would a new uh, unit like this cost? We're, at a minimum, eight hundred thousand. That that's at a minimum. Chief, am I far off? And in, this truck uh, in two thousand and five, I think we paid uh, a little over five hundred thousand for it at the time. Again, um, we've had good service life. It's been an excellent vehicle uh, in our inventory, and uh, with this, we can, as Trustee Joseph said, um, continue its use. And as we evolve in uh, uh, further into the township, uh, there's other practical uses for it. Uh, it'll, it's, uh, it'll extend its life uh, and serve us well. Thank you. Any comments from the board? How many miles are on that truck now? Uh, a little under 50,000. And it's a 2005? 2000, uh, manufactured 2004, delivered in 2005. It was a demo model when they purchased it back then. It came, I think, with just under 5,000 miles on it. Okay, thank you. Any comments from the public? Motion by Trustee Domingue, support by Trustee Anderson to approve site item 7E as stated. Clerk Barry, please call the roll. Trustee Domingue. Aye. Trustee Anderson. Aye. Trustee Joseph. Aye. Trustee Bosberg. Aye. Treasurer Lafada. Aye. Supervisor Ecovetti. Aye. Clerk Barry. Aye. Thank you. Uh, motion prevails and not thank you because the next one is you as well. 7F approve a request to purchase a fire rescue boat from the North Oldham, Kentucky Fire Department in the amount of $70,000 from GL 205-340-977. Do I have a motion? Motion to approve is stated. Motion by Clerk Barry. Support. Support by Trustee Joseph. Uh, I'm going to turn a lot of this over to Chief Miller. Uh, this was one of the undertakings that he took when he first came here. Um, as we diversified the fire department and repurposed where our personnel were and what the mission was, one of the biggest deficiencies that we immediately recognized was we have a, uh, we, we, our lack of water response, water firefighting, and, and uh, public safety capabilities on the water. Uh, Chief Miller spent the last uh, few months researching, uh, trying to come up with a uh, a practical application of how we can respond and uh, I believe he's nailed it on this one we have uh, located or he has located a boat uh, I believe there's a photograph in your package this boat is uh, a tooth or was delivered uh, new to old North Oldham Kentucky uh, new a little over uh, or a little under two hundred thousand dollars it's been down there it's served their department well um, they were in a position of uh, transition um, we have uh, um, researched it. Again, I'll, I'll, I'll defer to Chief Miller if you want to pick up where I left off. He's done most of the research on it. Members of the board, good evening. Um, just to let you know, uh, the concept of this vessel will fill a gap that we can provide to our shoreline to protect the folks both on the water and the folks that live alongside the water and even up our waterways and that sort of thing. It's a multi-use vessel. That is, it's very durable, can be used for firefighting on shore as well as on water. It could be used to deploy oil spill boom in the event of a leak and help protect the environment. It can be used for medical emergencies. It can be used to deploy our newly trained uh, rescue divers that we have in the department and that project that's ongoing. Um, it has an enclosed cabin so it would have the ability to 
um, be used for search and rescue or operations on the water in the colder seasons, pretty much anything but ice on the water. Uh, has a great capability of moving water. We could use that as an unlimited fire hydrant. It could pump water from the lake to trucks on shore in the event we had an incident. It really is a well-rounded uh, tool for us to use and has a lot of capability. Um, tremendous benefit in the age of it. It's old, but not too old. It will serve many, many, many years for the township and um, has uh, a few maintenance issues and updates and that sort of thing, but we'll take great pride in bringing it up to speed and making it a part of our fleet. Trustee, you make. Uh, uh, one added point. Uh, Chief Miller also has been negotiating with this fire department in the last week, and they've reduced their costs. Uh, the, the ask is $68,000. I have an updated invo invoice that they provided uh, to us for, um, for purchase. Trustee Domain. Sorry, I usually ask you guys questions ahead of time. You know what's coming. If we get this, the board approves it, what do you think the response time will be from the guys from the station to get to the boat and let's say mouth of the salt river, well, all depends where you have it. What do you think the response time will be from the station to the guys to get to the boat and then to be started with? Got an idea, just give me a ballpark. Uh, it's gonna be, I, I would and say. Not knowing where we're gonna put it. If we're gonna yeah, put it down yeah. by Rosso or up by the salt where you guys find the spot. Yeah, I, I would say it would be two to three minute response time, obviously powering it up, getting it active and getting it ready to go. One of the operational plans that we're going to develop is this isn't gonna be a sole purpose, just uh, firemen. We're going to also train some police officers in its use also. Uh, and again, uh, being public safety, we're not going to cross train, but we are going to at least give a, both the police and fire training. So should there be a need, somebody can get to it quicker th than the other. Okay. So I want to thank you. Uh, the Sorry, little, the, 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 the operational development plan, that's what we're going to work on through the winter time and, and really nail that down. Okay. Thanks, for Trustee Anderson. I just wonder what other what other watercraft does the department have that this would complement? We have two inland um, boats that are on trailers. They're small, uh, four and six man. Four. Yeah, okay. four and six man uh, inflatables. Uh, those are more more designed for the inland lakes that we have, uh, Lake Tranquility, uh, Lake Ant up uh, 24 mile. Road. Um, this is more of a lake craft and a canal craft. Thank you. Did I miss anything? Trustee Vosberg. Thank you, Mr. Supervisor. Um, I approve of the concept of having a, a boat, you know, for, for the purposes that you mentioned. Well, um, I'm looking at this picture, which looks like it's kind of It's tough. condensed. I apologize for that. Oh, it's longer than? It is much longer than so that picture depicts. <laughs> Okay, so it's not a squatting room. Yeah, boat. Okay. it is. It, it is. A, it's a. It is a, a large craft. It is 30 foot. I would say 33 with the engines. Okay. With the well, then how tall is it? That's, with that uh, antenna. With that antenna, it's 14.5. Will that go under the new bridge? No, it will not. Our smaller bolts would be used in that area. Uh, how about will it go into canals? Yes. Can it go like into? Live view yes. and all of the ones um, yes. along south of yeah. Yes, that it would that it would do. With how much how much I don't know what you call that. I'm not a boater. How much two and a half foot. Draft? draft, two and a half foot. Two and a half foot. Okay. Because I see um, especially with more um, we're inviting more activity on some of the waterways and that so the the nice, it would be nice to have something like this, but I, I am concerned about not, it not being able to go like into the Salt River beyond past Jefferson, can't I, go west of Jefferson. I think once you see this thing, I, it, it's, uh, it mirrors a military landing craft mm -hmm. and it's double hulled aluminum steel design, um, lends it to just getting about anywhere mm -hmm. other than the bridge. Other than under the bridge. Under that's, the bridge. That's, that's my, Through the height. my thing. I'm concerned about that. Um, if it didn't have the antenna sticking up, would it? No. Oh, still no. That, that roof line there? Yeah, it'd be about 11.5 from water line up to the top. Hmm. Okay, did you look into anything shorter that, would, yes. that you could use, take under the salt for the roof? We, we, uh, I'll speak to you. That'd be the 14-footer we have right now. Yeah. 
which is equipped with uh, a 30 horsepower motor. That would be able to get up there the full length all the way into the shallows where we'd be needing them to get rescue under there for that. So the response plan, everything up Salt River from Jefferson would be with one of the smaller inland boats that we have. Okay, so, and where would you launch that? That would probably come from the uh, proposed paddle park or anybody's backyard along the yeah. Salt River. Okay. It can be carried, it can be thrown in, it's light enough, but it's also big enough to get up, up creek. Okay, all right, thank you, Mr. Supervisor. Trustee Joseph. Thank you. Um, one of the things that uh, when this started getting floated out there and, and uh, had the chance to, no pun intended, thanks, sorry, uh, was the chance to talk to you a little bit at the open house about this uh, potentially, you know, coming to the board. And it's, it's, t it's tough to see, you know, exactly what uh, from just internet research, but what, uh, what it looks like in terms of the North Oldham, Oldham uh, Kentucky Fire Department is that the political winds sort of changed. Like they made the investment in this uh, watercraft, which uh, they're taking a pretty terrific beating on. I forgot what I saw the original price was. It's pretty substantial. And then uh, in terms of the condition of the, uh, the boat, it's, it's sort of like a, uh, uh, the maintenance has, has really not been there. But it's not like it's been actively you know, part of their fleet. And so uh, some of the other ideas that are being talked about in terms of the um, multi-use, and you mentioned the uh, cross-training or the lack of, you know, not cross-training, this might be a great opportunity to talk with our police and fire about a joint operation. Uh, because as, as, as we talked about earlier, uh, whether we were talking about the fire trucks and the painting, and whether or not we're going to um, look at what our fire service has been and where we're headed, from some conversations that I've had with administrative administrators in the fire department is that there's a real interest in being a specialized rescue department and focusing our uh, personnel's interest in rescue and fire. Uh, and this seems like a great opportunity to add to the apparatus and it's a whole new uh, rescue opportunity with some additional training that could come in. But in terms of the uniqueness of our township and the fact that we are public safety, uh, to incorporate the police side of that and maybe <coughs> even as far as how we letter this uh, craft and leaving it open uh, for law enforcement uh, as well. And looking at uh, some opportunities online, and I'm sure your people know more about this, uh, Director Kirsten, but there seems to be opportunities from Homeland Security for communities uh, that are uh, have the water uh, frontage that we have and we share an international border. Uh, grant opportunities uh, seem to come into play if we have a watercraft this size, provided that we uh, utilize it in uh, somewhat of a law enforcement capacity. So uh, Homeland Security and the uh, potential grant opportunities, and I was wondering if you could speak to that, if that's something that is in the uh, you know, sort of wheelhouse, uh, but it seems like a great fit um, I know there are big agencies that deal with that, but it looks as though the federal government is looking to partner with local municipalities, maybe even as small as Chesterfield, if we can help with uh, that effort. You, you, you're, you're spot on again. You've nailed it. Um, we do have conversations with Homeland Security. We are a part of a group that participates with uh, Homeland Security and funding there is and will be funding available for this sort of operation as you've described um, we will develop that into our operational plan as we move through the winter time and plan on deploying it and those doors are exactly what we intend to open uh, and, and entertain uh, in cross training so just as a follow-up, I know we're looking at some maintenance. There were a lot of uh, things that happen when a vehicle is not used or an engine isn't used. So, you know, a lot of the gaskets and the rubber seals and, you know, it's going to take some significant work to go through this and make it, you know, ready for the spring. Uh, part of that is the, uh, the aesthetics and what the lettering looks like. Is it your intention to letter it as a public safety uh, as opposed to just a fire? Very good. Thank you. Yes. And, okay. and there are, again, to follow up with what you said, once you do that, the federal government steps in and basically provides you with operational gas, oil, maintenance funds for it. Excellent. Because we've you. already opened the door for those Treasurer of Great. Thank you. Um, about probably four or five years ago, there was a 
boat fire, or multiple boats on uh, fire at Anchor Bay Marina, and uh, they had to call the foam vehicle from the air base over to put it out. Uh, a lot of gasoline, a lot of fiberglass. Um, will this, uh, I know there's, uh, on the inventory that I read, there's a pump on there, but is that pump going to be capable of, of foaming uh, a gasoline or oil fire out? Yes, it will. In fact, when we went down and had a chance to inspect the boat, um, Chief Brown from North Oldham took us through every nook and cranny on the vessel, and they had uh, six pails of foam and a foam inductor system built onto it. So, okay, absolutely. thank you. Trusty Vosberg. Thank you. Just one last question. Where is it going to be stored in the off season and where will it be placed during boating season? The plan, it comes with a trailer. So when it's delivered up here, um, it'll be on a, on a trailer. Um, we will put it in a the fire station. We'll spend the winter updating it, fixing, repairing. Um, we've had a conversation with a local resident who has offered his seawall. Um, for it, an inland seawall, but we um, will we'll engage in other conversations with other areas, uh, other marinas that may want to participate in where this is at. All right, thank you. Thank you. Any comments from the public? I support this endeavor, just like the new uh, technical aspect of our public safety in this public this service we do have 27 miles of shoreline in Chesterfield that's hardened when you take all the canals and the, the actual navigable waterways in Chesterfield a lot of homes residents along those shore shorelines and I think this will be a very good asset for our community. motion by clerk Barry supported by trustee Joseph to approve item 7f as stated clerk Barry please call the roll Clerk Barry, aye. <coughs> Trustee Joseph. Aye. Trustee Anderson. Aye. Trustee Domingue. Aye. Trustee Bosberg. Aye. Treasurer Lafada. Aye. Supervisor Akavetti. Aye. Thank you, Chief and Director. Thank you. 7G, a request from the Director of Facilities and Operations to construct a new concrete pad and relocation of the Howitzer Cannon to the municipal offices at a cost of $8,510 from GL 101-265-975. Do I have a motion? Move to approve. Motion by Trustee Bosberg. Second. Or by Clerk Barry. Discussion from the board or questions from the board for Director Sonnenberg. Good evening. Um, as I'm sure most of you can remember a while back, we uh, brought this to the board with a different dollar amount and um, we were asked to go through an exercise where we went out and did a little more, more research, got some additional prices and tried to find some savings. So we went ahead and did that. We reached out to over eight, well, 10 contractors. We got a response from four of them. Um, we went through that process, and what we found is the best price that we got to do the concrete, for example, was from our uh, gentleman who put the asphalt in at the time. We thought we'd find some synergy and let him do it, but that didn't work out, so I'm back asking for this dollar amount, and I'm kind of going to break it down for you. I apologize. I had some slides prepared, but we're having a little bit of technical difficulty. So I'm going to walk you through this proposal so you can understand it a little bit better. It's pretty simple and straightforward, as you can see, but I just want to give you some labor breakdowns because that was one of the requests that you had before and related to this project. So we got a price of roughly over $6,000 to install the concrete from our vendor here. With our team, I feel like if you're just taking the concrete portion of what we're looking at, which is the two items from Toit Projects, the $1,600 and the $60, and you add them up, and we figured it would take three guys approximately 20 hours, which is $2,280. So that would bring our concrete cost to approximately $3,840, which is almost half of what um, our contractor could do it for. And I'm pretty confident in our guys. One of our goals here at the township is, obviously we're giving away some of the lawn care. At the dollar rate we're paying our guys, we got some really good guys, and I think getting them into some of this more technical work creates more value for us. Like we discussed before, rather than sitting on a mower, getting them to do a little bit of the skilled trades was beneficial for us and they have the qualifications to do it. So that's the concrete portion. I'm gonna break it down into three portions so if you, if you guys choose, you could break it up in a little bit more detail. But the next thing is the decorative stone wall. So that slab that we're pouring is approximately three feet up in the air and what we intended to do with some of the renderings I showed you was do a three foot raised landscape, large, they're called Lake Superior flagstone stones around that perimeter to kind of hold it and elevate that tank. 
or cannon. You can, if you see it now at the current Vets Park, it sits down a slab at grade level, and some of the plants surrounding that cannon, it kind of, it kind of, you know, it doesn't do any justice. So the landscape prices that we have for our team to raise that wall, because that stone's pretty expensive. Is there a large tree? Um, no battery. Sorry, we lost the mic. Those are large three foot by two foot stones that we're gonna dry stack to go around that, um, that area. So the material cost for the decorative stone wall is about $4,000. And then there's a thousand dollars in there for the 21 dollars. Total that up, and we figured it was three guys for 32 hours. The landscaping portion was total about 8,648 dollars. Now there's also an electrical component there for 1850. Our thought was, while we're doing this, it makes sense to run some conduit up to the bottom of the pad and put in some lights. We have a gentleman that's working on the wall. And he's willing to do a lot of that labor, so all we're really paying for the material. It just makes us tend to put it at that time. So that's kind of the quick over. Oh, thanks, Michelle. That's kind of the quick overview. So if you add up the labor material cost of this proposal that you have in front of you, it's about fourteen thousand three hundred and thirty-eight dollars if you factor our labor and material total project costs. Now, we did have some, <coughs> we did have some um, cost, as you can see out there now with the forms and this and that, that were already built in. That was about $1,300, $1,360.79. So if you include those items, that brings us up to a total of $15,698.79. So I would like to get that pad in and get that cannon move before the snow flies. And I think it'll really do it justice back in that portion there behind the wall. I think that, as we, as you know, we trying to rename that area Vets Park, and that was part of the grant that we got for the parking area, was that Vets Park area, and I think it ties it all together. We have a motion by Clerk, or by Trustee Vosburgh, and support by Clerk, but any discussion? Big time, I think this has been in front of us. Trustee Joseph. Yeah, I just uh, wanted to say thanks, uh, Mr. Sonnenberg, for the uh, excellent work and the breakdown. Uh, when this was originally brought to the board and the discussion, um, we, we got, um, it, it got contested in an area that I wasn't thrilled with in terms of the contest, and it really had more to do with the uh, practice of looking at in-house labor as free labor. Uh, that a lot of the projects, uh, not necessarily brought by Mr. Sonnenberg, but over the years that I've been on the board, the idea that if we could do it in-house, it was free. And um, I always thought that that was a shot at the people that were doing the work, uh, because it, it assumes that a special project could just uh, rely on people that were not really doing anything the rest of the day. And these people are out uh, maintaining our parks and our um, grounds, uh, they have more more work than they have man hours, and so to pull them off of a project and say, well, we're going to save money because we got free man hours is a bit, bit of a misnomer. The hours have to come from somewhere, so if it is a kid playing t-ball that has to play t-ball in knee-high grass because the people assigned to that mower are off on a special project, it's clearly not free. And so uh, the discussion that centered around this project seemed to um, you know, kind of dial into that. And uh, I appreciate the extra work that you went back and did. Um, it was never really about the money so much as it was about how we formulate projects and how we use uh, valuable resources. And so uh, I, I appreciate the work that you've done and uh, the patience you have with the board in bringing this back and particularly with me. So thank you. Thank you. Motion by Clerk Barry, support by Trustee Vosberg to approve item 7G as stated. Clerk Barry, please call the roll. Oh, motion by Trustee Vosberg, support by Clerk Barry. Let's call the roll. Trustee Vosberg. Aye. Clerk Barry, aye. Trustee Anderson. Aye. Trustee Joseph. Aye. Trustee Domingue. Aye. Treasurer Lafada. Aye. Supervisor Acovetti. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Motion passes. Item 7H, which is a postponed item from the October 8th board meeting 
recommendation to approve administrative procedure order APO 12-2019 disciplinary action and adopt resolution 2019-34. I'll make a motion to remove 77H from the agenda. Support. Motion by Supervisor Acovetti, supported by Clerk Berry to remove 7H from the agenda as requested by the maker of the motion. Motion by Supervisor Acovetti, support by Trustee Joseph. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Supervisor. I appreciate your motion and, you know, clarifying this. Um, in terms of the request for the removal of the motion, um, I, I was wondering if we could talk a little bit about the uh, email that went to the board regarding this. Um, and, and the reason that I ask is um, to clarify it for the residents who were here and, you know, we went through a pretty rigorous debate. And the, uh, sorry? Yeah. We went through a pretty rigorous debate and the concern that I had with regard to the motion um, was that we were potentially allowing um, our workers to carry firearms into the workplace. And the, the rule. I think I, I, we tried it. We're, we're talking about the motion just to remove the agenda item. I, I, I understand the section of the agenda item. Well, there, inter, there, you, you asked me in the in the setup on this, what did I want? And I explained to you what I wanted. You said, well, we could do it this way. So I went along with that. But we're not really following the board rules here. So I'd like some latitude in talking about this issue because it is very important. Yeah, I got what you wanted was the item to be on the agenda. The, yes. item, the item was uh, requested to be removed somewhere along the way. It, it didn't end up on the agenda like it should have been. It's on the agenda. There's a motion in support to remove it, and that's what we should be discussing. I, I'll be happy to discuss this in board comments. I know it's dissatisfying to other members of the board, and I, I see the, the cues coming in from the third base coach. So I can do it in another way. Uh, but it was a disingenuous removal, in my opinion. And I can talk about it in board comments, or we could have a civil debate here. It's really up to you. I don't mind either way. I, frankly, I didn't support the item when it was here in the first place. Could we clarify it? it? Again, I think we could do this in a very diplomatic way. I'm not trying to. Ooh, just, you, you, you want to ask a question to direct to Duchesne about the actual item? But yes. Okay. Yes, yeah, if, that's, ask, if that's permitted, ask, and, ask and I, again, we'll, we'll keep it very diplomatic. The memo that you sent to the board clarifying why this motion was made to, to, to not have it come forward was the question that I had for you. Uh, specifically, the email indicates that after consultation with uh, labor relations or legal counsel, that there was a position uh, from our attorney that this issue could be resolved without board action. Uh, that this issue was something that was in the scope of the HR director and the supervisor. Fair? That is correct. Yes. So there really was never a need for board action. And would it be fair to say that the uh, not putting it on the agenda had more to do with that procedural issue and not any, uh, uh, I guess, attempt to, to, to take this behind closed doors, that this was really a uh, an item that allowed the HR department to, to institute a policy. That process is supported by uh, legal counsel and therefore it was not brought to the board? Uh, correct. Uh, I do apologize for the procedural uh, misstep, if you would, that the enhanced memorandum would be more uh, appropriate to read to ask the board to be dispositive of this issue and since it had only been postponed, we'd like to withdraw it, but the board then turn down or reject or do some dispositive action on the APO. So that's the other mechanical step that uh, I will ensure the enhanced memos in the future will ask for what action is also recommended. But you're correct, sir. Withdrawing it, uh, it left it up to two things. You ask a couple of good questions regarding can we make these rules? How do we make the rules? Um, that was answered. You just did a, a summary of that. Secondly, the uh, attorneys also, the labor attorney said, in response to your question about our article or item number 42 regarding internal postings, that's going to take a little deeper dive, so I'm going to look at that again. So that was the reason I requested to withdraw APO 12. 
uh, it is more in form of a directive and internal policy. Thank you. Motion to remove item 7H by Supervisor Recovery, supported by Clerk Berry. Seeing no further discussion, Clerk Berry, please call the roll. Supervisor Recovery. Aye. Clerk Berry, aye. Trustee Anderson. No. Trustee Joseph. No. Trustee Demink. Aye. Trustee Bosberg. Aye. Treasurer Lafada. No. Item 7H is removed. Um, let's remove from the agenda. Thank you. There are no addendum. Item number nine is public comment. Please limit your comments to five minutes. Going once, going twice. Oh, uh, Bring it up to the board, Trustee Joseph. Thank you. Uh, just a couple of quick comments tonight. Um, the, the issues involving um, our QBS team, we've had a couple of, uh, in subsequent meetings, we've had issues that have gone to the QBS team um, and, and the QBS process is designed uh, to take uh, board appointed and experts, if you will, in the township employee to look at an issue involving a vendor contract. Uh, when a vendor contract is uh, reviewed, uh, there's a process, a bid process. It comes before uh, the QBS team and then there's, there's an opportunity for all the members of the QBS team to sort of uh, have a spirited debate, ask any and all questions, vet out any concerns, and then the QBS team brings to the board a recommendation. What's happened in the last two board meetings, uh, which, you know, again, I guess is, is for me a bit of a breakdown in the QBS process. I, I um, don't want to be in a position where I'm uh, given uh, hand-picked pieces of data for consideration at a board meeting. If I'm on the QBS team, I'd like to be on the QBS team. I'd like to have the full opportunity to debate and uh, if I'm not on the QBS team, I like to rely on my partners to bring that information forward. And I have uh, faith, uh, I've been asked to have uh, faith, and um, uh, I do. So when one or two members of a big QBS team are dissatisfied with the outcome, the opportunity is within the QBS uh, uh, framework to, to, um, to have that discourse. I don't like it brought to the board, and I didn't appreciate the representation today, and I know it wasn't the, uh, um, the setup on the insurance and the presentation on the insurance was that a majority of the board wanted to have more information, so we were setting up this presentation, and that was really just not true. Um, the majority of the board, five to two, voted to uh, call the question. They were satisfied <laughs> with the information in the QBS. So, it, 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 it's, not, it's not the way the process is designed. Um, we we uh, have a lot of uh, discussion, some would say lectures, about following protocols and procedures. And we put a lot of them, and we have great emphasis on protocols and procedures and our APOs and how we are, um, board rules are to be conducted and so forth. And the issue that we had some confusion on tonight was very, it was a very straightforward uh, request. And so on October 8th, we had a discussion about work rules and whether or not this board was going to improve, approve work rules. And there were a number of issues within the work rules. One of them that was a real sticky spot was an issue involving the ability to carry a firearm in the workplace. And this idea and the work rule clarified that if you were in compliance with Michigan compiled law, that in essence you were in compliance with the work rule. Great debate, and if I'm in the minority on this, I'm okay with that, but I was never going to vote for a work rule that said it was an okay uh, to carry a firearm in the workplace provided you were in compliance with Michigan compiled law, because that also includes the fact that Michigan is an open carry state. Uh, so the idea of having employees come in legally able to carry a slinged rifle around their neck or a holster with a uh, handgun completely visible to the customers and their coworkers seemed absurd to me. And it seemed absurd to a lot of residents that called and said this is really not uh, anything close to a Second Amendment issue. Some very strong proponents of the Second Amendment who were not at all comfortable with that. And I felt that the comfort level probably wasn't there with our attorney or our insurance carrier. Uh, because if there is an incident, it will be the residents that will pay for this. Um, so 
the request was to postpone so that we could get information and a more enlightened decision. Um, now, what we find out in the discussion that I think uh, Mr. Duchesne clarified is that the decision to take a vote by the board is not even a board action. It doesn't require a board action. The, the work rules associated with employees can be determined by the HR director through the directive of the supervisor who is charged with the day-to-day -day operations of the building. So I respect that, uh, and, I, and I am not interested in interfering in a, a statutorily provided responsibility, uh, but if it's brought to the board for discussion, you can bet I'm going to share with you my opinion on why I'm voting no. I think it's a bad idea to have open carry uh, in the workplace. So if it's not up for a vote, then it, it has effectively been removed from my opinion, if you will. So. Uh, if that was the process and that's uh, what was, uh, you know, done, I understand. I'm, I, I'm not certain, um, no disrespect to uh, Mr. Duchesne's a very thorough guy. I don't think there's oversight here, but I'll accept his explanation. But the email that went out uh, was a problem for me because it in some ways violates the Open Meetings Act. Uh, there was a uh, provision that required this agenda item to be in front of you for deliberation. You could go one of two ways. We could continue to postponement because we needed more information, or you could put it on the agenda and ask for it to be withdrawn. It was a little bit too painful to try to get a discussion on this issue, and I don't like that because we spent so much time debating board rules and parliamentary procedure, but as soon as it was raised, it became a real ugly thing, and it shouldn't be that way. So. Um, I'm all for the rules, um, but when we pass rules to try to, uh, you know, sway or, or uh, make sure people can't weigh in on it, and then you don't even follow your own rules, it's frustrating. Um, the last thing that I want to say uh, tonight uh, was, again, to compliment the team on the um, uh, restoration of the shoreline. Uh, this is something that has been discussed uh, for really some time now. There have been a lot of uh, presentations and initial presentations and the concept was very intriguing to me and it remains uh, very intriguing to me. The reason for my no vote and the concerns that I have uh, are you know, a little, little bit layered and it's not entirely relevant uh, but it has nothing to do with the presentation and the work that was done by the team that brought it forward. It's clear they are truly experts in what they do and they made a very thorough presentation. Um, the cost is always a problem for me. I don't know that I've seen a cost uh, projection in this township that comes in at budget, and we call that a scope change. Uh, we make changes, and they're always over what they say. And this was the first proposal that I saw that included what we will do, and there was confidence on the part of the presenters. What will we do in the unlikely event that there is increased costs because we have seen this and we want to assure all the board members and this is what we will do and they have provisions for scaling the project back and I appreciated that very much. For me as I looked at the numbers uh, I don't fully subscribe to Mr. Miller's uh, belief of uh, and, and his presentation but I do believe there is no such thing as free money so the idea of a grant uh, they're still tax dollars. They may not necessarily be uh, ones that uh, came in large part from Chesterfield, but they are tax dollars, and when you're looking at spending tax dollars, um, th there has to be a belief that fundamentally the project meets the needs of the community. On many levels it does, principally safety. The shoreline and the seawall is a real problem, so this addresses that in a very safe way. Uh, and the contribution from the township, I think, matches the seawall area. So I'm comfortable there. Uh, again, I would like to see, and I know that the ship has sailed uh, on this uh, because of the work that's been done with this particular project. Ideally, I would have liked to have seen the costs associated with uh, a, 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 a more accessible beach option. Um, to me, it complemented some of the ideas that I saw from Mr. Sonnenberg with regard to the possibility of community centers. 
uh, this potentially has equal draw in terms of bringing people in for maybe a different purpose. So uh, it's just an area where I disagree, but it's not for any fundamentally uh, destructive reasons. It's just a difference of opinion, and I'm not. A, I'm, I'm perfectly okay with being uh, one of seven that, that saw it that way, and I appreciate the opportunity to weigh in and ask the questions. It didn't phase the presenters at all. They were on top of their game and they knew their stuff. So uh, I'm, I'm great with that process, and I want to thank. Uh, the team involved with that because it was very thorough. So uh, that concludes my comments, Mr. Supervisor. Trustee, Thank you. Trustee Anderson. Thank you, sir. Now, Mr. Joseph, you mentioned the terms uh, tax dollars, and that kind of segues into what I just want to cover real quick. Uh, crack out your voice from last Wednesday, October 16th specific. Go to the op opinion page. Peruse the article by Mr. Joe Kadich that appears on that page. That's last Wednesday's uh, voice, and reflect on it. That's all I'll say about that right now. And in the famous last words, less of the, when a week or so we got Halloween here, watch out for the little children walking around with, uh, with Paul coming in here. Thank you. Trustee Domingue. No comments this evening. Trustee Vesper. No comments. Treasurer Lafada. I'd just like to thank the residents for their attendance at the board meeting. Thank you. Clerk Barry. No comments, Mr. Supervisor. Thank you. Lots of politicking going on up here for the last few years. It's obviously starting to uh, ramp up. The time to have some, some of these discussions what politics? is when... It's just free shots. It's just free shot. I'm sorry, sir. Would you like me to go back to you for your, for your comments? I just wonder why you're making that remark. Are you reflecting on yourself or what? There's a lot of, conflict. There's a lot of politics going on. No, we, we're aware of that, sir. We're aware of that. Please. I do oh, not boy. interrupt you when you speak. You do. There's a lot of politics going on up here. I will say it again. I was only going to say it once. Well, you said I, it eight times. Can you move along? It's because of the grunting and the disruptions. We got a close session. I was very disappointed with the call to question. And I'm appreciative of your respect for the QBS process. That's a process I created. That's a process that's working very, very well here. What I didn't like was this is still a public meeting. The vendor, yes, we have a process. I think that process has integrity. That process involves a team. That process is designed for board action. To stop a discussion on an item like that for not only the, the vendor that we're looking to hire through that process, other vendors who might oppose it, and the entire public as well. It's happened a couple of times where there were call of questions. Um, if I, I think that set a very dangerous precedent for, <coughs> for the other side, and I will do the best I can to use, use that uh, limited. And I think that was a disappointment for our board. 11, uh, we do have item number 11, closed session, and there is an action item coming out of closed session. Item 11A, discussion regarding strategy and negotiations pursuant to Section 8C of the Open Meetings Act. 11B, to consider the September 25th and October 16th legal opinion from township attorney subject to the attorney-client privilege pursuant to Section 8H of the Open Meetings Act. Do I have a motion to go into closed session? Motion to go into closed session. Second. Yeah. Motion by Trustee Mink, support by Trustee Bosberg. Clerk Berry, please call the roll. Trustee Demink. Aye. Trustee Bosberg. Aye. Trustee Anderson. Aye. Trustee Joseph. Aye. Treasurer Lafada. Aye. Supervisor Ecovetti. Aye. Clerk Berry. Aye. We are at closed session at 8.52 p.m. Motion to go back into open session. Motion to go to re-enter open session by Trustee Demink. Support by Trustee Vosberg. All those in favor? Oh, no. Clerk Berry, please call the roll. Trustee Domingue. Aye. Trustee Vosper. Aye. Trustee Anderson. Aye. Trustee Joseph. Aye. Trustee uh, Treasurer Lafada. Aye. Supervisor Acovetti. Aye. Clerk Barry, aye. Item 12A. Um, coming out of close, closed session, we, we're going to have two additional items, item 12B and 12C, starting with item 12A. Approve a recommendation by Public Works to pay in full Chesterfield Township's assessed portion of the Oakland Macomb Interceptor Drainage District project that includes the structural rehabilitation of the northeast sewage pumping station and the north interceptor east arm at a total cost of five hundred and seventy one thousand nine hundred fifty seven dollars and thirty six cents do i have a motion 
Motion by Trustee Vosberg. Second. Support by Clerk Barry. Discussion. Do I, this isn't directed. Yes, so this agenda item is to um, end the option through the county on November 1st to be notified of if we wanted to pay this uh, bond in lump sum or pay it over a basically a six-year span. Um, the page that we passed out in front of you uh, has a box in red that kind of explains the wall. It basically, in a nutshell, this shows that we're paying 62% of the principal of the bond in the first two years. So it really doesn't make sense to go out for a bond because we're basically paying the bulk of the front. So it just makes sense to pay in full and be done because we're paying so much principal of the front. Um, further explanation of it is it's going to be on the, on the background of the agenda item. There was three different sections that this uh, $100 million bond, as uh, Treasurer Lafonda mentioned, uh, the county planning to do a $100 million bond over the next two years. So this portion is the $12 million portion at the very bottom of the background section of the executive summary. And what that is basically working on is uh, meaning to connect, acquire the Northeast pump station, from Grace Lakes, day, day maintenance, and things of that nature. And it says the total improvements is $12 million in that section. So that's what this bond is for in that section. Um, next year, I'm talking with the county, we are going to be getting an $88 million bond from the county for the remainder of the project. That, that percentage is roughly $4.2 million. That will be bonded over a 20 or 25 year span. They're not really sure yet. Most likely is going to get the bigger bond. You're looking at $4.2 million before interest. Um, but this initial one is just for the $12 million. Um, and again, we recommend it. And we spoke with Treasurer LaFada on this. We kind of conversed and reached an agreement. And if I'm wrong, please correct me. But reached an agreement to pay it up front. It just made sense to save Thompson from having to pay additional $23,000. Um, if I could, I'm going to go to Clerk Barry first, then I'll go to Treasurer O'Connor. Just for clarification, uh, we, the Clerk's Office was asked to prepare Resolution Number 2019-38 um, in anticipation of the Board possibly wanting to take action on this item. We were given an updated we number. I just want to confirm and bring to the Board's attention in that resolution. Um, your information here in the red box uh, says 575-796. The updated number that we have that would be the number adopted, the resolution were adopted, is $571,957.36. Is that correct? That is correct. Thank you. Uh, the top of the page the red box, it says total amount of the the very top, that number. Below that, if we were to go to this bond and not be paying our initial principal, it would be that. We should talk to the Treasurer of the Bond, it would be the bond. There's a fee associated with that, so I should add it for a thousand dollars. In that case, Mr. Supervisor, I would ask the maker of the motion to amend her motion to adopt resolution number 2019-38. I, I, I have a question. Hold on one second. Um, would, will you amend your motion to include adopting resolution 2019-38, well, which is the tech, just to make the, the motion technically correct? Yes. 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 Okay. Continue to okay. Treasure five. They, the the county when they sent this and they asked how we wanted to pay it, sent a resolution along with it that all this we had to do. I just it. This is the exact resolution. Okay. Okay. They sent a sample and yes, you put you you customize it for Chesterfield. Yes. Uh, okay. So it's 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 accurate in every other regard. I've looked at two of them. The one that Paul sent me and the one that you sent me were the same. Yes. And this is just putting in Chesterfield Township for the blank. All the italicized where it's in city uh, okay. All right. Okay. Over here, I just it okay. Okay. All right. The the other thing is is uh, the funds the funds are available for December first payment. Um, like Kevin said, when you when you look at the interest rate and the bond fees and the front loading of the principal payment, it makes no sense to uh, be part of a bond action. Uh, township should make a one-time uh, payment. Um, what is hard to understand 
is this uh, line that's being allocated to 12 different uh, municipalities is in the city of Detroit. Great Lakes Water leases it from the Detroit Water and Sewer, which are supposed to be maintaining it and operating it. And now all of a sudden, the township, along with all the monthly fees that we pay, are now getting hit up for, again, repairs. Um, I, I don't know how this contract uh, actually got, you know, we signed a contract with Great Lakes Water. The first uh, increase in fixed rates were to shore up Detroit water and sewer infrastructure that we were using. And after a period of time, it looks like they've got their hand out again. And I don't know, again, contractually, how this happens. Uh, there was a comment made from the Macomb County Drainage Board that this was going to reduce cost. Well, it's not reducing cost. They increased our cost by about 4.6% on July 1st and increased our monthly payments for OMID. So I'm, I'm not sure what's going on, but this is another case of we really don't know when we pay them monthly $115,000 what we're getting. And I suggest that we have a meeting with the drainage district at the county to understand when we give them $115,000 and we pay Great Lakes Water $280,000 a month, what is, you know, what's in that money? Because, well, all I see for invoices that are being paid from the minutes from the drainage district is like your, their bureaucracy. Uh, I don't see anything going into the ground or anything being fixed. Any further comments on the board? I have one. Trustee Vosberg. Uh, just this language that they sent us, there's a typo on page two of three, the second, the third to the last paragraph, just spelling of there for. That's it, thank you. I agree with the recommendation to pay um, a lump sum now versus bond this over five years, the scale, six, six years, whatever it was, the scale, uh, the interest rate that we would pay did not make sense. We are financially able to, uh, to write the check now, so I, I agree with that concept. Beyond that, we really don't have many other choices here. Um, when we decided to connect to the Detroit sewer and water system, uh, 60s, 70s, whenever, whenever that was done, along with the 22 other Macomb County and Oakland County communities, that, that uh, our sewage essentially runs from smaller pipes from your house into bigger pipes. Eventually it runs right through the city of Detroit into the water treatment plant. This arm is um, one of those pieces that are in the city of Detroit. So we're really caught into a, um, a, a the only choice we have is if we pay the, pay it or bond it. Um, I will say that Great Lakes now owns this system and uh, Macomb <coughs> County, hence all of our other subdivisions of Macomb County are part of, of, of that system where in the past we, we had literally no voice. Now we have, uh, now we have some, so there's some, some silver, silver lining and I agree with paying it up front. Any further? Just uh, Trustee Joseph. Yeah. Um, I, I agree as well. I appreciated the breakdown of why it was advantageous for us uh, to go with the prepayment or you know the upfront payment as opposed to bonding it out. Um, two, two comments. Uh, one, we talked in our water sewer rate advisory board about exactly uh, this type of expenditure and coming up with a protocol for um, not just this, it was more along the lines of emergencies, but this was sort of an unforeseen expense as well. And creating a, a sort of a what if you know scenario, if we have this type of emergency at this dollar amount, what do we bond out? What do we pay for? Uh, it's a worthwhile uh, exercise, and I was wondering if we could, you know, again, it's, it's a little bit of skew from the motion, but if we could use this as an opportunity to take a look at some of those uh, questions and have uh, just the way you did in the presentation for this. Uh, this dollar amount makes more sense to pay based on the bond and sort of predict uh, emergencies and have that protocol in place. Two, um, I was always wondering, and anybody who knows this, feel free to, the breakdown in the uh, resolution lists all of the municipalities that are part of the, you know, 
what goes into establishing your percentage because there are some communities in this uh, configuration that are substantially bigger than ours as far as population and square miles yet our percentage is bigger than theirs so what's the formula there and why do we have a four percent share uh, when you know other communities look to have more and less what what's the formula And, and if I would, um, yeah. it doesn't matter if it's actually sewage flow. It just matters if it's flowing through the sewage pipe. Oh, so really? Yes, there, there are there are communities. Old, oh, there are communities, older ones, um, that, that that get infiltration from rainwater. That flow, you're paying sewage on in these rates. So the the fact that they're keeping your system tight and up to speed is very very important. Washington Township is half of ours. Frazier is 2.7. Are these rates something that we can, um, can, can we take a look at? I mean, have we ever, uh, or do we just, we just go with whatever the meters say and that's the, is there, is there a way to get a, a, a handle on our percentage? Is there something we can do to take a look at, you know, how we're um, being assessed and can we control it in any way? So when the lake water goes in, our flow rate goes up. Have you ever seen an adjustment uh, based on uh, analyzation of the flow rates? Uh, has that ever been a successful endeavor? I'm not that I'm aware of. I've seen it fluctuate a little bit, but I haven't seen an actual like, Dollar amount? Yeah. yeah, gotcha. Okay. Thank you. Uh, anyone else? We have, we have a motion by Trustee Vosburgh, support by Clerk. <laughs> approve item 12 as stated with the addition of a approval of res resolution 2018-38 any further discussion? one nine sir one nine oh 2019 three. Let me move behind. motion by trustee vosberg support by clerk barry clerk barry please call the roll trustee vosberg aye clerk barry aye trustee anderson aye Trustee Joseph. Aye. Trustee Demink. Aye. Treasurer Lafada. Aye. Supervisor Acovetti. Aye. We do have two items coming out of closed session, and I will turn it over to Treasurer Lafada or our legal counsel on those items. I'm not going to make a motion. Okay. Um, I'd like to um, make a motion to approve a resolution to transfer the six hundred and sixty thousand dollars from the drainage district to chesterfield township and i'd like to make a motion not to take over the well, one, at, one, 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 one at a time second first motion. Yeah, one first yeah, yeah that's that's the first one let's do them separately Yes. Yeah, uh, 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 um, a motion or resolution not to take over the North Gratiot Interceptor from the drainage district. Okay, so there, we're, we're on 12B, a motion by Treasurer Lafada to, I'm, I'm just going to say it directly, exactly how you said it, and then I'm, I might reword it here for you. A motion to, um, to approve a resolution to transfer $660,000 from the drainage district to Chesterfield Township, support by Trustee Anderson. Mr. Supervisor, just for clarification on that motion, um, is it the maker of the motion's intention to direct our attorney to make that request? Is that the resolution? I, I believe that is, but I will see That's if we want to amend it. 
Okay, so um, if if I could, with the with the input, a motion to direct legal counsel. to draft a resolution to transfer the 630, 660, whatever the balance is, from the drainage district to Chesterfield Township. Is that correct, Treasurer Lafada? Correct. Motion by Treasurer Lafada, continued support by Continue. Trustee Anderson. Discussion? Do we need Come. to Oh, Trustee Vosper. Do we need to name the district? Do we have to name it in this motion, or uh, can we work that out in the? It's it's the, it's, it's the six hundred and sixty thousand that the county had referenced in their in their letter requesting us to take over the North Gratiot Interceptor. All right, so it's been identified. Thank yes. you. <laughs> Any further comments from the board? No. Okay. Um, motion by Treasurer Lafada, support by Trustee Anderson. Clerk Barry, please call the roll. Treasurer Lafada. Aye. Trustee Anderson. Aye. Trustee Joseph. Aye. Trustee Domingue. Aye. Trustee Vosper. Aye. Supervisor Acovetti. No. Clerk Barry. Aye. Item 12C, or item 12B passes. Item 12C is a Treasurer Lafada. Uh, motion to decline the acceptance of the North Gratiot Interceptor from. The drainage district will that work? Sure. And to direct me to draft resolution. And to direct our legal counsel to draft a notification to the drainage district. Support. Motion by Treasurer Lafada to decline the acceptance of the North Gratiot interceptor from Macomb County and to direct legal counsel to draft a transmittal or resolution of, of, a effect. resolution to that effect yep motion by tr Should I motion to approve my motion? Motion by treasurer <laughs> trustee Anderson <laughs> uh, motion by trustee Anderson Motion by support. Treasurer Lafada. Support. Support. Motion by Treasurer Lafada. Support by Trustee, Trustee Anderson. I mean, I am, and I am trying to assist you, Trust Treasurer Lafada, making sure I get your motion exactly right. Correctly. Discussion. I have one. A point. Could we would make the motion consider including at this time decline at this time. To the motion maker. I, I, I guess that what I'm getting at is we might want to take it back at some point. We might decide we do want it. We're in just saying years, at this in time we don't in want six it. Years. Maybe they won't give it to us. <laughs> it's, it's just it's just wording. I mean, I, I don't care if you do or don't. But. It's ours. You can't answer. Let legal counsel decide which way that I think the wording will be best. Well, I think I think there's always at this time built into the process. So clearly, if this goes forward, and then there's a, <laughs> a counter, which I hope is is uh, Could be under where we go, which is a negotiation process, um, I think that's I think that's uh, self-evident. Um, my um, opposition to this is strictly related to uh, we're still in ongoing negotiations uh, currently with uh, responsible on their end and my end, but I. Uh, I Appreciate the intent of the motion maker and the support. We have a motion by Trust Tr Treasurer well, Lafada. Super, just if I, could, if I could speak on that comment, uh, is there parallel negotiations going on with with this uh, on this issue? Because I think when we discussed it, I thought we had a delegation that went <coughs> in. Um, I don't know who all was oh, on uh, it. Yeah, is there something in addition to? That, that you that, that that is, the board should the, be the aware of? The, spokes, the spokespeople for the group is uh, Director Duchesne, Treasurer Lafada, Trustee Anderson was there, and our DPW. Okay. Uh, if I could then just comment. Uh, the, the discussions that we had in closed session without violating closed session were very, very uh, valuable to me, and I appreciated the work that was done and the negotiating team coming back and being able to advise the board 
uh, it left us in a position to have a very clear course of action. And um, although we're on opposite ends of the uh, you know desk, I could tell uh, Trustee Demake felt the same way. We were pretty informed tonight, and that was because of the work that was done by the negotiating team. So thank you to our uh, DPW staff. Uh, Mr. Duchesne and the board members that were present along with our attorney. So appreciate that very much. Thank you. Motion by Treasurer Lafada, support by Trustee Anderson to decline the acceptance of the North Gratiot Interceptor from Macomb County and direct legal counsel to draft a resolution to that effect. Barry, please call the roll. Treasurer Lafada. Aye. Trustee Anderson. Aye. Trustee Joseph. Aye. Trustee Domingue. Aye. Trustee Vosberg. Aye. Supervisor Acovetti. No. Very aye. Motion passes. Item 13 is adjournment. We have a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Support. Clerk, very support by trustees. We need to adjourn. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed by saying nay. We are.